Greeting to all viewers. We are delighted to serve you through the video clips uploaded on 22 Hours channel. We hope to receive your support and feedback. Now let's review the most notable news highlight of the past 22 hours. Today, China unexpectedly became furious and shot down six U.S. destroyers in the South China Sea, disregarding the fierce retaliation from the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, according to the renowned Chinese newspaper China Morning Post, citing Mr. Engai Fuangho, China's Minister of Defense, the Chinese Navy has shot down six USS aircraft carriers belonging to the U.S. Pacific Fleet out of frustration for being cornered by U.S. vessels. According to the same newspaper, Quoting an anonymous general from the Chinese Ministry of Defense, when the Chinese Navy detected six large destroyers from the U.S. 7th Fleet advancing into the South China Sea, specifically approaching the artificial islands of China, the Chinese Navy issued a warning to the U.S. ships, stating that the U.S. Navy should immediately withdraw six mentioned warships from the sea, beyond the dangerous limits for the artificial islands and military zones of China. If not, China will open fire. However, despite warnings from the Chinese Navy, the missile-carrying destroyers named after spices from the U.S. 7th Fleet continue to accelerate dangerously close to the borderline on the military bases that China illegally established on the artificial islands in the South China Sea to intimidate and send a firm message to China to cease its expansionist actions in the South China Sea. If not, the U.S. 7th Fleet will obliterate these illegal islands of China, realizing the imminent danger to China's military zones in the South China Sea. Immediately, Beijing issued an urgent announcement that China's navy is allowed to shoot down any U.S. warship that violates its territorial waters. After receiving the order, the missiles deployed by China in the military zones on the artificial islands, combined with a formidable fleet of 50 ships, including Coast Guard ships, maritime police ships, surveillance ships, warships, and even aircraft carriers, along with Marines and bombers, along with submarines equipped with torpedoes, simultaneously opened fire on the six warships of the U.S. Navy. The battle was extremely dangerous and fierce, due to the relatively thin and disadvantaged lineup of the U.S. Navy compared to the dense formation of the Chinese Navy, all six U.S. warships were shot down by China's vessels. However, in the most perilous and tense moment, five large aircraft carriers from the U.S. Pacific Fleet appeared, along with fighter jets, bombers, and paratroopers surrounding and launching a continuous barrage of missiles, forcing Beijing to announce a ceasefire and withdraw all ships from the aforementioned conflict. Ladies and gentlemen, according to Reuters, China's ships exhibited unsafe and unprofessional behavior. The spokesperson for the U.S. Pacific Fleet, Admiral Gorman, commented on the incident as follows. China's warships had carried out a series of provocative actions earlier and escalated each time our warships were conducting routine patrols and surveillance missions in the South China Sea in accordance with international law. Our ships from the Pacific Fleet did not violate the waters of China. We only navigated around the artificial islands believed to be unlawfully constructed by China in the South China Sea when, surprisingly, the Chinese Navy deployed numerous boats to threaten our fleet. We emphasized that our Pacific fleet was conducting routine patrols in the common waters of the East Sea, not violating China's territorial waters. However, China immediately fired a series of missiles, believed to be from artificial islands and Chinese ships, at our fleet, leading to a tense confrontation. We confirmed that the collision did not affect our warships. We reject China's claim that our fleet was shot down by China, which is entirely false. According to a general in China's Ministry of Defense, after the clash, our world's most powerful 7th Fleet immediately deployed additional USS aircraft carriers, bombers, marines, and paratroopers to eliminate the Chinese Navy. Fortunately, China announced a withdrawal, or else a full-scale battle would have occurred, resulting in at least 10 Chinese warships sinking in the South China Sea. According to China's Honam newspaper, tensions between the Chinese and U.S. navies have been long-standing and recently escalated as President Biden continuously dispatched warships, destroyers, missile-carrying aircraft carriers, and state-of-the-art fighter jets to the South China Sea to deter China and send a strong message to President Xi Jinping's government to stop its unreasonable expansion in the South China Sea. In response to these challenges, China's foreign ministry spokesperson, Ken Seng, a loyal ally of Xi Jinping, boldly declared that China has full sovereignty over the South China Sea, and most sea routes in the South China Sea belong to China. China is ready to open fire, respond strongly to anyone, to any country intending to infringe on China's territorial waters in the South China Sea. According to observers, according to Ken Seng, 
All sovereignty over the large and small islands in the South China Sea belongs to China. This is the reason for the anger of President Biden's administration, and the U.S. wants to teach China where the lesson in the South China Sea. According to China's Honan newspaper, citing Ngai Fuanghou, China's Minister of Defense, the U.S. action is an act of coercion and aggression. If not restrained, this action will lead to a war in the South China Sea, and we are determined not to let the U.S. leave an inch of land, a small rock in the South China Sea. We will fight to protect our islands in the South China Sea. According to a general in the U.S. Department of Defense who believes that we are never afraid of China, we will continue to have aircraft carriers operate in the South China Sea and be ready to conduct live fire exercises and launch missiles when necessary. If China's Navy initiates aggression or puts pressure on and poses a threat to our fleet, we will be ready to open fire, sink Chinese ships in the South China Sea to teach China where the lesson. According to the New York Times, despite intense conflicts between the U.S. and Chinese navies, U.S. aircraft carriers continue to operate in the South China Sea, challenging China. U.S. military commanders state that the presence of aircraft carriers like the USS Ronald Reagan establishes a foundation for stability and the freedom of navigation in the South China Sea, despite China's attempts to impede. Approximately 200 kilometers off the west coast of the Philippines, U.S. fighter jets roar in the sky, while the USS Ronald Reagan conducts exercises in the South China Sea, an area where U.S. and Chinese warships frequently clash, vying for control over training waters. China quickly reacts, and satellite images show the USS Ronald Reagan surrounded by multiple Chinese ships. China's Ministry of Defense opposes and accuses the U.S. of provoking conflict with China. Ladies and gentlemen, the ambition of China's leader, Xi Jinping, is to control all the islands in the South China Sea. Therefore, the United States, along with European allies such as the United Kingdom, France, Germany, as well as Japan, South Korea, and Russia, will never allow China to expand recklessly in the South China Sea. China has unlawfully declared sovereignty over the South China Sea, in violation of the 1992 United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. This growing concern in the South China Sea is due to its strategic importance in global trade, with maritime commerce valued at 5 billion US dollars annually. In addition to its crucial international strategic location, the South China Sea holds the world's largest oil and gas reserves. Therefore, the US frequently conducts exercises in the region, sometimes with the participation of other nations, to assert freedom of navigation rights and to deter China. Given the increasingly tense relations between the US, and China. There are growing concerns about China's intentions in the South China Sea. China's actions over the years, such as illegal military buildup on artificial islands, claiming sovereignty over the Nine Dash Line, and recent activities like the intrusion of Haidu Nine vessels into the territorial waters and exclusive economic zones of countries in Southeast Asia, especially Vietnam, Malaysia, and the Philippines, have been vehemently criticized by the international community and are predicted to further stir up tensions in the South China Sea. In response, the U.S. recently deployed its most powerful weapons near China. The appearance of the nuclear-powered submarine USS Nevada near Guam is considered a message to adversaries about the superior capabilities of the U.S. amid escalating tensions in the Indian Ocean Pacific region. The USS Nevada, a nuclear-powered Ohio-class submarine of the U.S. Navy, arrived at a port on Guam on January 15. This marks its first visit to Guam since 2016 and the second visit since the 1980s. The visit aims to strengthen cooperation between the U.S. and allies in the region, demonstrating the U.S.'s capabilities, flexibility, readiness, and strong commitment to the security and stability of the Indian Ocean Pacific region, said a U.S. Navy statement. The U.S.'s Nevada is considered one of the most formidable weapons in the U.S. Navy's arsenal. The submarine can carry 20 Trident ballistic missiles, each with multiple nuclear warheads. Running on nuclear power allows it to operate continuously underwater for months without refueling. On average, each Ohio-class nuclear submarine can stay submerged for 77 days with a crew of over 150 sailors. The schedules of nuclear submarines in the U.S. Navy's fleet are typically kept secret. The secrecy surrounding ballistic missile submarines makes them the most critical component of the U.S.'s nuclear triad which includes land-based ballistic missiles and air-launched nuclear-capable bombers like the B-2 and B-52. Analysts believe that, amid escalating tensions between the U.S. and China over the Taiwan issue, coupled with North Korea's recent missile tests, Washington has openly showcased the operations of nuclear submarines in Guam, something that both Beijing and Pyongyang could not anticipate. This move by the U.S. 
sends a message that, whether intentional or not, we can place over 100 nuclear warheads at your doorstep, and you may not even know or be able to respond, said Thomas Shigart, an analyst at the new U.S. Security Center. North Korea's ballistic missile submarine program is still in its early stages, while China's estimated fleet of six ballistic missile submarines remains outmatched by the U.S. According to 2021 analysis by experts at the Center for Strategic and International Studies, China's Type 094 ballistic missile submarines lack the capabilities of their U.S. counterparts. China's Type 094 submarines generate twice the noise of U.S. submarines, making them more easily detectable. Additionally, these submarines also carry fewer missiles and warheads. Professor Alessio Padalano at King's College London stated that, alongside the political message, the presence of the USS Nevada in the region also signifies another aspect. The presence of this type of vessel, especially in training and exercises, provides additional significant opportunities to learn how to detect the vessels of other countries in the region. North Korea is attempting to build such vessels, and China has put some into operation. The US, enhancing skills to hunt other countries' vessels is as important as deploying them as a strategic deterrent, noted expert Padalano. The most recent visit of a U.S. nuclear submarine to Guam was in 2016. With the USS Pennsylvania's visit, analysts argue that tensions across the Indian Ocean Pacific region have significantly increased since then, and Washington is likely to stage many more military power demonstrations in the current environment. Regarding developments related to the South China Sea, we will gather and provide updates in subsequent news broadcasts. For today's program, we would like to temporarily conclude here. Please don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notification bell to stay updated with the latest news that we update daily. Wishing you all a pleasant day, goodbye, and see you again. We extend our sincere thank you to you and all the viewers who have been paying attention. Please like, subscribe to our channel, and click the bell icon to receive the fastest and most accurate updates from our channel. Goodbye and see you again.